wanna know about the mystery of flight I wanna hear about the scene down right So kill your TV and just come outside We're gonna take you on a beautiful ride What an incredible match that you had. I got to watch it. Once again, I try to tell people all the time, the field that you beat and the people that you played against are some of the most talented people, not only the Houston area, but the Texas area. And we have a lot of up-and-coming players. And it's kind of funny now that him and I will always say we have a lot of up-and-coming players because I don't know what age to start at. Because you had the Montenegros, you had the Bentes, you had the uh, Finnells there. And then you throw yourself in there and you throw Freddie in there and Jason Maith and Anthony. I mean, it's just amazing the talent that we have in this area. But what did you think about the event and what did you think about Spring Valley? So, oh, man. Uh, first, first off, thank you for including me in the players like that, uh, listing all those people, because Freddie is just when you listed Freddie, Freddie is a boss. Oh, my gosh. He's awesome. Um, but no, the event a whole as a whole, Spring Valley Spectacular, I loved it. I actually genuinely loved it. And that was actually the first time I ever got to play Spring Valley was this past weekend. I, I originally was gonna play it at the Spring Wide Open way earlier back in March, but I had to drop out because our collegiate team was going to collegiate nationals in North Carolina. So I was a little bummed about that, but at the same time I was going to college nationals. So it was kind of like, okay, but I'm really glad I got to play the course finally. Cause, oh man, that course was beautiful. It was amazing. The weather was fantastic. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah. I'm surprised that you bounced back as as fast as you did. You recovered fast. Yeah. From so booties out there bombing 15 drives on every hole. But for those that don't know, about how long how long ago was it? About a month, or month and a half, probably. Whenever Moody. I was out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been about. I a month. yeah, I ended up tearing my labrum in my right shoulder, so I had to recover for about a month. And I remember doing that. It was the second round at Big Arms on the Brazos. It was the final round of Big Arms of the Brazos when I did it. I know I, I remember exactly when I did it. But uh, so I'm actually, I'm actually surprised I covered, recovered so quickly. But I'm glad I did. You have a very unique warm up, especially for somebody who flicks. And it was interesting once I kind of broke it down because the body movement is that of almost batting like your left hander and you're still (laughs) swinging those shoulders through. So kind of talk us through what you're thinking when you do that. So I, uh, me being a forehand dominant player, um, my warm up is probably a little bit different than the usual backhand players, but I kind of do a lefty backhand warm up. Uh, that's just kind of how it is. And I know a lot of people probably got questions as far as that, but, um, the main reason I do that, and I, I say this to everyone that usually asks, but, um, it's for core rotation. I need to make sure I get my hips through and I need to make sure that I get my core and my lower half through, because that is what really, for me, drives the power through the disc. I, that's what allows me to get so much power and so much distance, I think, on my drives. You just answered one of my questions was, where does the power come from? You pretty much nailed it right there. Yeah. Um, I watched a, a video a while back, Mark Ellis with, with Discraft. And he was he was illustrating for your, uh, for your backhand uh, to hit with your opposite hand. So hit like, for me, hit like you're right-handed. And then, and that's the feel. And that's pretty much what you just described. And it's kind of a baseball it's like a hitting motion almost yeah that's but that is where a lot of my power comes from is the lower half and keeping it as tight to my body as i can that's kind of where it goes the, the tighter i feel like the tighter i am to my body the more quicker it's going to come out it's like the rotation's quicker mm-hmm. did you play other sports when you were younger how long have you been playing so i <laughs> um i've actually been playing disc golf collectively Collectively, I think I've been playing for about two years, two and a half years. Um, I've had my PDJ number for just over about a year and a half now. I didn't decide to start taking it serious until I, I told myself, I was like, maybe I could actually do this. And I was like, uh, I was thinking about playing tournaments. And then actually a buddy of mine, uh, Caleb Wilkins, 
he was the one that was like, hey, you should maybe consider playing some tournaments. And I was like, okay. So it was like, if I'm gonna do this though, I need to, I need to play serious. So I had, I got my PAG number and then started playing tournaments a year and a half ago. But um, as far as background goes for me, I get this question a lot. And yes, I was a baseball player. <laughs> mm. I played a lot of baseball when I was younger, um, but I also played a lot of tennis. I loved tennis and baseball both. I never threw sidearm though in baseball like most everybody thought. I I threw mainly over the top, so it's kind of the motion's a little bit different. But yeah, you had a nice six-stroke lead, <laughs> so kind of walk us through that whole happening. So that's how much I was up by. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, going into I think it was finesse eighteen, which I think was hole twenty-one on the layout, twenty-two. Yeah, because y'all had three more holes after that. You had seven, eight, and nine to finish up. So that would have been yeah. one. Yeah, so going into that hole, I I knew I was having a good round. And I told myself, I was like, you know, I really want to try and get this one because I knew how hard of a two it was to get. Um, I thought I threw it pretty well off the off the uh, tee. So I was like, oh, okay, that's not bad. When it got that kick and may or may not have definitely cut it just a little bit too much inside. <laughs> that may or may not have smacked that tree pretty hard. So I was like, okay, that's fine. So, um, yeah, I was just thinking to myself, like, let's save the four. And so uh, on my upshot, I, but it was oh, yeah. Moments where I was like, that's funny. It wasn't hey, funny. I, it was funny. Hey, I was Chandler, angry. This is, this is what I was talking about earlier. Chris is, it's almost like tough love that comes from him. He's loving your, your, your uh, faults you know no yeah no it's okay <laughs> honestly looking back at it now i can laugh like i can laugh at it now but at the time i was definitely very frustrated and i remember my mindset was something along the lines of wow i really just did that <laughs> and then so I, and then it, it went from i just really did that to i now have to throw another shot that's like 10 feet in front of me because i i went right back ob but um, at that point, I threw another up shot. I think that was my, that would be number five. And then I was like, I apparently got some weird roll because I thought I threw it into the hill on the left and it rolled almost all the way OB again. And I was like, wow, this is really happening to me right now. <laughs> but um, after that, I was like, okay, let's just get up and down. So I tossed a jump putt up there. I thought it was, thought it was good. And then I go up there and the, it spits out for my putt. And I was just like, I, I really actually had nothing to say after that. I was just like, yeah, I guess if I'm going to have a bad hole, it's it's just going to all fall apart, like all in once. Like You had something to say. I'm going to have to bleep it out. That's what oh, you yeah. have to say. Yeah. <laughs> I, hey, yeah. And just FYI, those, those kind of holes always end with a spit out. I, uh, I think I now, I know that the hard way now. <laughs> Uh, you know, how many times have you done that? You just totally mess up a hole and then it's, miss the 20 yeah. spit it. it. Fun fact, that is, I think, the first time I have ever taken a quintuple bogey in a in a sanctioned round. Wow. So, uh, yeah. That's which rough. which hole was that? It an S18. An S18. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. One, that's the one that got Alex. Alex <laughs> would have won pretty easily. He would have won. He had me by two. And yeah. then after that hole, I had him by one. Mm-hmm. On the I, video. That's where I told you I was walking back there and all I heard was tree chopping. I was like, man, who is all hitting these dead trees? But Freddie went OB as like well, did he not? Freddie, <laughs> Freddie went OB as well, if I'm not mistaken, but then yeah. he placed it perfectly up there and got his, his tap in four for a bogey. Um, doesn't he have that nice, doesn't he have that nice uh, Annie flick up shot? Yeah, he does. He Freddie does. kills with that shot. I'm interested in the mindset of somebody who can throw 5'10". Yeah, so, <laughs> on a flick on that hole so, you, can, you, know, you can be up there putting you can be up there putting on that hole yeah so after i had just tapped in i had just chained out and i really had nothing to say so i kind of just quickly tapped in and was walking to the back of for the next tee pad i knew that the hole was done and i knew how scorable the next three were so I was like, okay, we're officially kind of done with the trouble. Like, unless I just like throw it OB, which I was like, we're not going to do that. We're going to make sure we don't throw OB. But I was, I was frustrated. But then at the same time, I thought to myself like, okay, let's get it out and then let's move on. Like I was very frustrated, but I needed to give myself a little bit of time. And I think on the video, you probably saw me like, just want to throw my putter. I like pump fake. I turned, the, yeah. I, turned, I, I turned like pump like, faked oh, it. I like pump fake because like I was that was kind of my way of getting getting some anger out. I don't really I try not to to say anything 
uh, bad, but sometimes things slip out. And then I think it slipped out once on the on video and I immediately was like, sorry. <laughs> and then I just heard everybody laugh and I was like, okay. But um, yeah, so after I took scores, like I was watching everybody tee off on the next hole. It was open. There was really no OB to worry about unless I really just threw one bad. And then I, I thought to myself, we're gonna we're gonna get some frustration out. We're gonna unload on this drive. So mm -hmm. my my thought process was throw this as hard and controlled at the same time as I possibly can. And I, I think I did. Man. I knew for sure I couldn't allow myself to just throw it away. I knew I knew I was possibly still leading, or I knew it wasn't completely over. I think I had enough lead, but I, I wasn't scores i actually try not to catch uh, any I, I try not to keep up with any of the scores going on during the round i try to keep up my own but not like what everybody else is doing so i figured you know just go through my routine i can be frustrated a little bit but i gotta keep it under control i can't just completely lose my head it's that's not a good thing to do at all and i've, yeah, I've yeah. actually been in some bad situations when i first started playing that i learned from not ever do that again because that would be a very bad thing to do it definitely um kind of an alarm goes off kind of saying like hey like this is real this is happening like this is not like as much as a, as much as you wish you were dreaming this is happening and if anything it makes me focus up a little bit more um but yeah that was oh man i ah just that whole <laughs> but i overall i think i was able to recover pretty well from that I have a hole like yeah. that where I something doesn't go my way, or in this case, about five different throws don't go my way. Um, I like <laughs> I try to use that as more motivation than anger. I kind of like the kind of fuels me to do better. It really pushes me mentally to just do better, and that's kind of what I tell myself a lot. Where if I throw a bad shot or something kicks OB or I make a bad putt and just airball one. I, I kind of tell myself like, just that's not good enough. Just do better. And so that's kind of what I focus on. So I usually take that and try to turn it around and help it like motivate and push my game a little bit better. What's the uh, college connection? I've never really uh, watched any college uh, disc golf, but I have some friends who played and, you know, I know that um, I think I saw a connection with uh, some of your stuff. Yeah. So current well currently i mentioned that i'm or yeah i'm currently at a&m i'll be graduating in december with my bachelor's in electrical engineering so hopefully I'm, I'm ready to be done i'm ready to be out of college but um i am a part of the a&m disc golf team that we have here and i am not the captain but i'm on the team and we recently actually just got to go to the usdgc and dean's cup this year we were one of the four teams that got invited uh, to play at that event. And that was a that was a really great time. Have you set goals? Have you decided if you want to be um, sponsored? If so, are you looking at some uh, some sponsors already? I am. I'm very glad you asked this because I would like. Yeah. So I kind of was curious as to what I wanted to do with disc golf. I didn't know if I wanted it to be a hobby, if I wanted to try to pursue it a little more. And I can say without a doubt that I want to pursue this. I am trying very, very hard. I'm, I'm close, but I'm not exactly there. I'm trying to get to a thousand rated and I would like to go on the pro tour in 2022. I would very much love to. And that being said, I'm looking for sponsors. Uh, if anybody would like to sponsor cool. me. Very nice. Out. Hey, let me just say, let me just put in a plug. This is the next level type of player. And all it's going to take really is just going through some wins and some losses and some, you know, just kind of getting in the grinder. But as far as the skill set, this is the guy. <laughs> this is one of the best. In fact, that was my question that left me just a minute ago was how much of disc golf influences i know you're about to wrap up college influences where you want to live or you know what's your next move oh that's a good one hold on uh have you thought about was, that i i haven't and the main reason i haven't thought about that is because if i'm gonna go on tour next year if if that becomes available to me to able to tour around I would probably try to get some kind of van or something like that so that I can tour around and go. And that would kind of be my place of living for the most part. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as if permanent location wise, 
I, I would probably still stay in Texas. I really love Texas disc golf. I love the courses. I kind of did a little mini Texas tour since I couldn't really go on tour this year. Over the summer, I did a little mini Texas tour and I played all over Texas. I drove up to the Panhandle. I drove down to Lotes. I've been to East Texas, Central Texas. I've been I've been to a lot of places, but um, Texas golf is, I, I love the courses here. I think, and the people are even better. A lot of people that I met are amazing. I, mean, I digress. <laughs> so anyway, well, thanks for uh, coming. And, and uh, yeah, I really don't have another question uh, in mind, but um, thanks for spending time. I know you got tests and stuff like that and you're busy, but um, congrats on, on pulling it together. And uh, thank you very much. And overcoming and getting through whole 18. But um, well, first off, thank you, Chris, David, for very much for having me on. I really appreciate this. Um, yeah, I want to thank coming. my caddy, Chris, um, Chris Cox. He not only caddied for me, but he allowed me to stay at his place for this weekend. So I really appreciate everything that you did for me this weekend, Chris. Thank you very much. And um, I will be at VPO this upcoming weekend against a very, very stacked field. So I'm excited for that. I've never played veterans, but I, I'm looking forward to it. Barsby will be there, Bradley Williams will be there, Emerson Keith, let's see, I think Zachariah Johnson will be there, Mason Ford will be there, there's, I think about, I think I, I think I did, I think I counted, I think there's 11-ish touring pros that are at the, at the tournament this year. <laughs>